Hey gearheads, it's Toby with GearReport.com and we're finally here today to do our reveal and review of our ATI Snow Trooper build. So stay tuned and see what we ended up tearing up. <laughs> All right, guys, so are you ready? We're gonna do a reveal, and then we're gonna do a review of some of the ATI parts and some of the equipment that's on our Storm Snow Trooper build. So drum roll, please. All right, so let's talk about some of the features of the, the ATI Snow Trooper build. Um, you saw a little montage there of what the gun looked like as a Spikes Tactical AR-15, and then as what it looked like during some of the build process of dressing it up to get it to where the end product is. So now we want to take it down and just go through a couple things for you. <coughs> first things first, I want to uh, show that the firearm is in fact unloaded see in there that we're working safe for everything we're doing here okay um, first thing or second thing second I guess since first thing is safety is I want to say that I'm extremely pleased if you want to just stop the video now and don't go any further then I can honestly tell you that everything that we ended up running with on the firearm itself from ATI is top-notch I can't complain about anything everything was was perfect the internal parts, of course, work just like you'd expect, springs, gas tubes, the low profile gas block, et cetera. But overall on the outside, the things that were, were, were visible and noticeable to the way that the thing ran, um, the fore end turned out much better than I ever could have hoped for. The X1 pad on the, the stock, uh, the uh, adjustable stock was extremely comfortable and it helped a lot of our shooters who were having um, problems with their shoulder issues like we talked about in the previous videos. The X1 pistol grip ended up being the one that we went with and the reason is, and we'll talk through that here in just a few minutes, as well as we kind of talked through it on some of the initial initial thoughts in the unboxing, is that um, mainly it's just because of the fact that the, the X2 style for my size hand, and again I wear a size medium glove, so I'm not winning any big hand contests, but at the same time, I'm just your average Joe. The X2 style, by definition, was actually perfectly perfect, 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 perfect. So in other words, what I mean by that is as you got a, a purchase on the, the grip and you held it, my, it pushed the, the pad of my hand back just far enough to where my finger rested perfectly center pad of, or rather, yeah, center of the pad of my, my index finger every single time so I was getting the exact same grip every single time but since I've you know so old school and have not trained that way I couldn't quite get used to it and so I went back to the X1 which is more of a traditional style that indents further here to give you uh, more room to push up the webbing of your hand into the uh, into closer in towards the trigger guard and the trigger so that I could then do my usual trigger control all right guys so a couple of things that uh, of note that were um, <clears throat> that were noteworthy and, and really came in handy for me overall were, for starters, the QD quick detach right here on the, the stock came in really handy in tandem with the Strike Industries quad rail for us running the two-point sling. Or, I'm sorry, the Picatinny rail for us running the two-point sling. That was really handy for what we were doing when we were out there running with, with a bunch of guests. Um, of course, like we mentioned a few minutes ago, the X1 butt pad 
extension to give it a little bit more beef compared to the stock pad. Really helped with recoil reduction and recoil management. ATI's got a winner on this one. So if you're not worried so much about, about you know, the recoil or the felt recoil, you can go with the, the stock one. Or if you're going to be running plates or, or uh, plate carriers or anything like that, you can go with the stock and not have to worry about it. But if you have shooters who are concerned or if you're concerned with the felt recoil, this thing is amazing. And it was very easy to install. Love this rubberized grip on the back. That really gives a good, a good hold and a good control and gets rid of any kind of slip or slippage when you're, you're grabbing it that you would even dream of having. The forend, being the full, the full size 15 inch forend, that thing really just looks extremely amazing. And it gives me a very good grip radius when I'm grabbing, punching out, and moving. We killed the chain, first shot. Not supposed to shoot that one. Not supposed to shoot the chain. I nailed, I was aiming for the chain. That's rule number two. That was that was totally ninja. I was aiming for the chain and took it out. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that trigger cut's chain broke. Yeah, Boom. baby. All right. Okay, guys. So another few things to talk about here. Uh, I do want to point out that the forend when I went to attach and line up. The Picatinny from the existing upper to the Picatinny of the forend. I really had to torque this thing down, really had to torque it down to get it to line up perfectly level. Um, it was off just a bit counterclockwise, so I had to really kind of dig in there and give it a hard time to get it to line up. That said, though, once I got it set in place, it did set. Um, I personally did not have to use the spacers that came with it to get it to, to line up front to back. Um, so that wasn't a problem for me. Uh, other than that, though, this forend, I mean, it's just worked perfect. I, you know, I ran a couple of, of uh, I tossed a couple of um, accessories on the top rail just to see how it would work. Nothing happened other than me kind of tearing some of the gun skins there. You can see that the M-Lock covers, they fit just perfectly standard for an M-Lock. Overall, I'm very pleased with the weight. I'm pleased with the length. I'm pleased with the maneuverability and control that it gives. It's just a great product. Um, the muzzle brake is absolutely vicious. That thing is just sexy. Now, that said though, um, what it did do, as you can see, is the muzzle blast, and I left, I intentionally haven't cleaned it yet. I wanted to leave some of the gunpowder and residue on there. You can see that it does push the blast out to the sides instead of, the, and a little to the top and none to the bottom. So there wasn't a noticeable rise, muzzle rise control. It was more just a flash control where it was pushing, pushing the flash out to the left or to the right and a little, or uh, pushing the blast out to the left or to the right and uh, very little upwards. So um, if you were standing beside of me, people were, <laughs> were having a, a chuckle about how much it was throwing out to the side. So, so kudos to them on that. Um, of course, the Amend 2 magazines work flawlessly, as you would expect. Uh, my only complaint with the Amend 2, and this isn't on ATI, obviously, because it's just a product to carry, is as you can see, and this may just be where I need to adjust a little bit, um, once you've got an empty mag, I'm having some issues with getting it to drop free. So uh, that may be just an adjustment and some tweaks I need to do. We'll see. Uh, the A2 Fostec binary trigger. This thing was a lot of fun. Uh, believe it or not, it actually has a pretty good trigger pull and a, and a very good tactile reset. So just using it as a standard semi-auto trigger without using it in binary or echo mode alone was amazing. I mean, it, it, it's, it's on par with some of the, the nicer drop-in triggers that you would pay a lot more, um, that you would pay, well, I won't say a lot more because this trigger actually ranks up there pretty high in price as far as the MSRP goes. Um, Let's talk about the, the whole shot sights for a second. So I didn't actually get a chance to test those at all. And the reason I didn't get a chance to test them is because of the height of them, the height over bore. So since I was using the EOTech and was wanting to set it up for a co-witness style, I didn't actually get to use them at all because they actually stand up too high. And I don't know if that'll show up very well on the camera there, but they actually stand up well above center. So center of EOTech is here 
Senator, the, the whole hole is just up a bit. So I, I wasn't able to get the co-witness going for that. What I did is I, I dialed the front sight post down as, as absolute far as it would go and still you know, needed to go down more to get it to line up. So what I'll have to do is I'm gonna have to take that EOTech completely off or I'm gonna have to uh, do a little play and like turn the EOTech off and try to get the, those sided in. Maybe I can come back and talk about it a little more if anybody's interested some other day, but that didn't work out too good for me. The Magpul, low profile grip on the front, love that thing. That thing is awesome. Like I said, it gives you a really good control, really good reach. Um, overall, bottom line is I'm extremely pleased with everything from ATI. Appreciate them partnering with us on this build. Uh, very happy the way it turned out. So if there's anything that we've seen or done here on some of this review that we didn't give you enough details on or that you're curious about or that you're wondering about, let us know. Comment below and tell us, hey, you dropped the ball, man. Let me know. I wanted to, I wanted to hear about that, that UTG light laser combo. You know, is that a good cheap solution or whatever? Um, like, subscribe, follow us here on YouTube. Uh, keep us going. Help us to continue to help you to make those decisions before you spend your money, your hard-earned money on products. Uh, keep going to the range. Keep having fun. And until we see you out there on the range, you keep living your dream.